Welcome back everyone, hope you're all doing well today. Thank you for joining me again for another adventure into the past of Nevada's casino history. Today we'll be talking about the Waldorf Club that was located in Reno, Nevada from the years of 1920 until 1948 or somewhere around 1956. This is one of the earliest casinos I think in Nevada history if I'm correct. There was a point about a month or two ago where I was completely obsessed with this place but could never find any information about it so I kind of let it go but now we're back. So let's begin. It was originally opened by Robert Preston in 1910. If I'm correct it originally opened up as a bar um, like many of these earlier clubs did. In 1929 it would get moved next door to where it was originally to. Um, it got moved to 142 North Virginia Street. April 31st, the Waldorf Club would get licensed for five slot machines, and over the next few months got table games added as well. Over its lifetime, it was licensed for just about every game there was in the Reno area. Robert Preston would pass away in December of 1932, just over a year after the Waldorf Club opened up as a club, and Mildred Preston, his widow, would inherit his share of the club. She became the first female casino owner in northern Nevada. Preston and her business partner Charles Brenda ran the Waldorf until they sold it to Joseph and Solomon Belosky in 1938. Then they ran this business side of operations and leased the casino side to Jake and George Hagginson. In October of 1939, it would get sold to Arthur Nelson and Glenn Whittett. Jake and George still ran the casino side of things. The Waldorf featured a smoke shop, a sandwich bar, famous Coca-Cola drinks, and also a barber shop. On October 1st of 1948, the Waldorf would get sold again to Warren, Nelson, and Howard Ferris. At that time, the club was licensed for a pan table, a roulette table, and a blackjack table. The partners would operate the club until April 1st of 1949, and Ferris would leave the partnership. Nick Abelman, who we've talked about dealing with a few places now, would take over and have 75% of the club, while Nelson retained the other 25%. Abelman and Nelson wouldn't get along too well, and it didn't last long until Nelson left the Waldorf. In 1950, Abelman was licensed for one roulette table, a blackjack table, and six slot machines, making the club much smaller than it was at one time. Harold and Anna Walters with Roy Nelson would enter the picture around September of 1951, and they were licensed for gaming at the Waldorf. Abelman was supposed to leave the Waldorf, but that didn't happen. It was then licensed for 25 slot machines, one craps table, and a roulette table. The grand opening of Reno's oldest and newest landmark was held on November 28th of 1951. Abelman would later pass away on December 15th of 1951. Abelman's widow June and Al Bisignano were licensed as new partners in the Waldorf. Over the next couple of years, lots of changes with the license happened, and in 1953, more partners were added to the license. In 1954, James Hammond was licensed for the Waldorf, and the club was licensed for 15 slot machines, two blackjack tables, and a roulette table. In 1956, the state of Nevada cited the Waldorf for improper operation of a blackjack game. The Waldorf's president at the time, Harold Walters, denied that, and on July 31st, the Gaming Control Board recommended that the Waldorf had have its gaming and slot licenses revoked. The very next day, that happened. It would finally close on November 29th of 1956, leaving 25 employees out of work, and the doors closed. At that time, they had two blackjack tables, 20 slot machines, a bar, and a restaurant as well. New owners would buy it again and use it, get licensed for gaming, but never got any of the tables back into the building. Only slot machines were added, which was probably easier to operate with a bar and a restaurant in the same place. Not long after, it gets sold again and bought to fully get rid of gaming. A similar cycle would repeat for a while, where people bought it for a bit and sold it, finally up until 1979, when the Youngs were owning it. 
they would sell it to the club Calneva, and the doors of the Waldorf would finally close for the last time on July 28th of 1979. Nowadays, it's a part of the club Calneva. The Waldorf had quite the history behind it, and stood for a very long time to be honest. I wonder how many chips there really were made for that place. It's something that I want to chase after now for some reason. The chip rack guide shows four chips made, and the chip guide only shows two. Both places saying that gaming stopped in 1948, but I wonder if there were more chips made when each owner acquired the place, or they just used the same chips, same dice, same layouts, etc. That's something I'd like to know or find more information about. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let me know if you have any more information about the Waldorf or anything to do with it. I'd love to hear and read more, but thanks for watching, and it's been Oscar. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.